Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Suggs and welcome to my channel. Today is March 5th and I want to talk to you a little bit about some things that have been happening today. Oh, I can't imagine what that could be. Hmm. Well, if it has the initial CM, well then you may be 100% correct. I know that's corny, whatever. Anyway, so listen, I'm going to uh, talk about a few things here that has been going on around the internet and concerning Captain Marvel. And so, right now it looks like the Rotten Tomato score for Captain Marvel has come out. Initially today, when it came out, it was at 91%. And in a matter of a few hours, it has dropped down to 83%. So I want to touch on that a little bit. I also want to touch on Mary Sue. What is that exactly? A lot of my viewers are new to this, don't understand what that is. They've heard that term. I mentioned what chills are. Uh, and so that's also a term that's thrown around. And I don't like a lot of these terms that are haphazard, but when you hear these words, you pretty much kind of identify what they are immediately. And that's why I use that. That's why it's okay to use them. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And so when I say Mary Sue, it's just a derogatory, well, it's not a derogatory, well, it is in some ways a derogatory term, but it's not, it's not personal in nature. It just, it is what it is, it has a connotation to it. And so I also want to talk a little bit about Terry Crews and I'll hit on that in a little bit because that's a real life example of what can happen. If you heard the story with Terry Crews recently, I'm going to mention that and bringing things back into focus. Because a lot of times on these chats and comments that I'm getting, none of these attacks toward us and me in particular really has anything to do with us personally. And really it doesn't have anything to do with what we're saying. It just is an attack on something that they project on us that we never said to begin with. I mentioned that yesterday. So I find it a little humorous. This morning I posted a video stating, well, let me start over. So this morning I get up, I'd already done two videos. I put one up for A Star is Born, and I put one up from last night, informal, that I didn't have time to actually put together and edit. Those two went up, and I was ready to get to work. Well, it just so happens I was looking through my timeline, and I saw that Jeremy Johns, one of my favorite critics, online posted a review on Captain Marvel and so I said you know what let's go check this out and let me first say this this whole thing with Captain Marvel sounds like a broken record okay we have channels all over the place vloggers and youtubers talking about this very rarely do I see anyone talking about the movie itself in terms of it being a certain way it really has everything to do with the marketing of the movie and the direction that Marvel has been trying to put forth for the past few films. Well, not so much Marvel. Let's say Disney. And also other companies have been put together films that are strictly driven to drive the narrative of social justice warriors. Virtual signaling. And pointing the finger at anyone who has a negative opinion of that. That's really all this is about. Captain Marvel just happens to be in the way. And I think after so many films, I think the, law, the lines has been drawn in the sand, particularly after The Last Jedi. And we saw what happened with Solo that came out after that. And I'm not going to I'm not going to rehash everything that happened before that. There's enough stuff out there. I've posted a few about that about the history and Brie Larson, her comments, and so forth. But I think the negative commentary that comes back has nothing to do with us personally or the fact that we dislike the movie because we really have never even seen the movie. Very few of us have. So that's not the point. And so I'm getting these comments coming forth. And I just want to say that there's a real-life example for this. This isn't just... I can speak for myself. And I don't think many others 
feel any differently than this. There may be a few. There may be a few that are having a good time with this. I'm not really having a good time with this because there's a big thing going on under the surface. And when I talk about what happened with Terry Crews, you understand, or I hope you understand, that there's a point in time where this entertainment crosses into real life and affects real people. And we can sit behind our keyboards as much as we want and type away and type these, you know, rude and, and, and ugly things to one another and not listen to one another and keep doing that and act like nothing is happening in real life. But it only takes one time to be at a grocery store or to be at the mall or to be out with your kids at their soccer game and have someone say something and someone comment back or be treated a certain way because of certain things, because you've been perceived as something, because of something you've said or looked at something or commented, misappropriated somebody's culture, whatever. Whatever someone feels their offense is, next thing you know, they could be on you. So this isn't just about Captain Marvel. This is about anything that happens with anybody who doesn't listen, who doesn't think for themselves, who's driven by a, a narrative that is, in my opinion, abusive and wrong and unnecessary. And so we'll talk about Terry Crews a little bit on that. And lastly, we're going to talk about Midnight's Edge just released a nice 11 minute documentary on the their projections of the box office release of Captain Marvel, as well as a few other things. I'll talk about that soon. Okay, so with no further ado, let's talk about the 93%, which is not Captain Marvel. That was actually Wonder Woman. And it's kind of interesting. I saw this, that you actually have the current review of Wonder Woman is sitting at 93% with an audience score of 88%. And that has a, the reviews that that has received is 417, looks like. Contrast that with our Captain Marvel. Check it out. 10 points lower. Now, this, this morning it was around 91%, and it dropped in about four or five hours down to 83%. I'm not sure where it is now, but this, Recording is right now about 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and this review was as of about 11, as of about 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So it could be higher or lower at this point. I just found it kind of funny that the 83% is exactly 10 10% less than that of Wonder Woman. And oh, you know what? Where's the audience score for um, Captain Marvel? You know what? Oh, I forgot about that. There is no audience score for Captain Marvel, which is another glaring thing on this. Uh, diagram that I put up or this graphic that I put up. So, you know, I'm going to do a comparison on Wonder Woman. I'm actually going to do a review on Wonder Woman. You know, I just started this channel recently with movie reviews, and so there's a lot of movies to catch up on, and I don't know which ones really to do from an older standpoint. So I'll be bringing movies up as they come prevalent to pop culture or as necessary. I may put some up for the Marvel movies as we lead up to bigger films like Infinity Wars and, and I mean, Endgame and so forth. I may do that. I don't know. It just depends. But I definitely want to do some of my classic movies. I love those. And that's more for just my entertainment myself because I like doing that. But anyway, that's Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel. And Captain Marvel is, I haven't seen it, so I'm not going to talk about it directly. But we'll leave it here. I probably will try and see it Thursday if, if possible. If not, I'll get around to seeing it maybe this weekend. If it just depends. I don't know. I'm throwing it up there, but I'm not looking for this movie to be bad. I don't really want it necessarily to be bad because I'm a comic, comic books fan. I like comic book movies. I think when one comic book movie does poorly, a lot of the other comic book movies also suffer because what happens in Hollywood is that producers see the trend. If they start seeing a downward trend on certain types of movies, they're less likely to make them. Now, Marvel probably isn't at any problem with this, but I'm just saying in general. I want as many superhero movies, comic book movies, as you can put out there. And I want them to all be good. And I was extremely excited in Captain Marvel 
especially at the end credit on Infinity War. I Infinity War, because it led up to something that we thought was going to be really, really cool leading into Ant-Man and the Wasp. And so, that's just for the record. But, at the same time, life, to me, in, in, in real situations, are more important than a movie. And so, when it comes down to it, I'll take my family and my country and life and common sense over entertainment any day. And I don't take very kindly to being preached to from a narrative that is destructive, in my opinion. So anyway, that is uh, the take on Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman. And I'm going to jump over here to a website. This is National Review. And we're going to talk about Mary Sue a little bit. This is from today. This is from the, uh, it's, it's called Captain Mary Sue. And this is basically a review of Captain Marvel. I'm going to just read a few paragraphs here. And so let me just first set, set the stage here. So a Mary Sue is, is essentially a character that is obviously is a female. But this character is a character that is designed to well, push a narrative that nothing can really go wrong with this per nothing can go wrong with this particular character because they're trying to project something that this person, this character, is great in everything that they do. And she is less likely to be diverse in her um, emotions and her and she's very targeted in what she can and can't do. She can't, she always saves the day. She usually is the smartest person in the room. And not that these things can't happen, but it, it tends to be a situation where the character is actually pigeonholed into something very, very predictable. Because if you want to create a role of a Mary Sue, you're saying basically, I want to push the narrative that this woman can do this. Well then, from a plot standpoint and from a writing standpoint, you can't shift from that because the whole purpose of that character is to push that particular role. So you can't have that person do something outside of that narrative. That's what Mary Sue is. And so let's go down here and let's talk about this. So we have, it says, two years ago, Wonder Woman proved a female-led superhero movie could reach the highest levels of genre, with Gal Gadot proving robust and redoubtable, yet also charming and feminine. I spent Captain Marvel waiting for Godot. What I got was Brie Larson, charmless, humorless, a character without texture that she might as well be made of aluminum. Now I'm hearing this a lot in a lot of these reviews that she's so serious and she's so, and it could be a situation where, no, I'm not, I guess, let's just back up here. It's perfectly okay, in my opinion, for a woman to be directed, to be type A, to be go-getter, whatever. I don't see a problem with that. But I think it, it can fall into the narrative, whereas if there's not any vulnerability, that can be a problem. That's what, Jerry, that's what Jeremy Johns was saying, that if the character, whether male or female, is invulnerable, it becomes, to me, but what's, what's the point? I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, Luke Cage season, I believe it was season two, where, you know, he's, Luke Cage is a character on Netflix. He is a a man who has bulletproof skin in the first season, I hope I'm not spoiling anything, there was a vulnerable aspect of that where he could actually get hurt. When well, the second one, they've already used that plot line, so he really couldn't get hurt. And so it was like, when he walked into a room, I'm like, oh boy, well, he's just going to, you know. And it became really hard. And Superman himself in the 80s was so powerful that it was hard to write stories for Superman because no one could hurt him. And how many times are you going to bring up Kryptonite, right? You just can't keep doing that. So then they dumbed him down in the 90s, his powers, that his powers came from the sun, and he could actually exhaust himself, and he could actually die from exhaustion if he's, you know, if, if, it's, if he drains down his power cells in his, in, his, in, his, um, in his body. And that's how Doomsday was able to kill him. And that's how they were able to rewrite and redo Superman. So that's kind of what they're saying, what Jeremy Johns was saying, and I'm assuming that's what this writer here is saying here as well. She, uh, let me see, is this a guy or a girl? This is Kyle Smith. I'm assuming it's a guy. He goes on to say, Captain Marvel might be the first blockbuster movie whose animating idea is fear. 
And this is the point I wanted to talk to you about because I read this and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. I mean, not cool, but I mean, it's the way he's bringing this up. Every page of the script betrays terror of what people might say about the film on social media. Another thing Jeremy Jones brought up, when he first came on to his review, and you can check the review, I'll even know a link on this particular thing too, but I, I put a link on my other page, but you can Google Jeremy Johns and check out his latest review on Captain Marvel when you see it. But even he was saying, you know, at, when he first came on, he was like, you know what? I'm not sure if I should even do this because, it, it, you know, if I do, if I say it's good, some people are going to be mad at me. If I say it's bad, some people are going to be mad at me. And in fact, John Campia also said the same thing. And so, yeah, so people are just tripping out here. They don't know what to do because, you know, am I going to be honest about this opinion or am I going to say something differently for whatever reason? Because I'm afraid of retribution or whatever. All right, here we go. All right, so give Daryl, give Carol Danvers a love interest. Eek! No woman can be defined by the men in their lives. Make her vulnerable. OMG! No, that's crazy. Feminine. What century are you from? If you think females should be feminine. Toward the end of the movie, when a villain preparing for an epic confrontation with Carol. The fighter pilot turns superwoman chides her that she will fail because she can't control her emotions. There's a there's no tension whatsoever. We just spent two hours watching her be utterly unfazed by anything. Giving Carol actual emotions would of course lead to at least twenty seven people calling the film misogynistic on Twitter. And the directors of Anne Bolden and Ryan Fleck are petrified of that. I'll leave it there. I'll leave a link in the description, but you know, Kyle has this, I mean, I haven't seen the movie. I can't comment on, but I'm interested to, to see for myself. But from what I'm hearing, the message is clear, but the Marvel's credit, they were upfront about this from the very beginning. They were like, look, this is going to be a feminist movie and this is going to be strong empowerment and all that stuff. And that's cool. I mean, what do you think Thelma, Lu Thelma and Louise was? I mean, this is not, not nothing new. Captain Marvel, this role of her, her is nothing new. And here's the whole point of this. I don't think anybody has necessarily a problem with that. The problem is, again, is feeling that, number one, that they're going to put politics into a role, which they can live with, I guess. But the more important thing about this is, and this is what's important, is the fact that if you say something outside of that, if you say something in, a, in opposition to that, then you're going to get denigrated. And that is the entire crux of this whole Captain Marvel deal. It has nothing to do with the quality of the movie. All of us comic book fans want this movie to be good. And I'm going to qualify good by saying, keeping a movie that's going to be to the story, to the script, bring in politics as it relates to the story, don't force it into the story, um, and make people feel guilty or bad because they're not in that particular class of society or race or sexual orientation or whatever, that they're excluded from that. And that makes people feel uncomfortable, especially when you're asking for their money. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And again, you know, I'm going to get some ranting and raving on this because they're going to think that I'm just, you know, just a, a whiny crybaby, a snowflake or whatever. And that's cool because nothing they're saying actually goes to the point of what we're really saying. So until you can come up with an argument against what I'm saying, then I have no problem with it. If you say, want to come, come at me with a, a valid argument of what we're saying, which you will not able, be able to unless you're, you know, unless you're just outright, you know, dictator in your approach to life, then we can actually have a discussion. Until then, you know, to each, to each his own, and we can agree to disagree. Now, to the third point I want to talk about is another article, and this one is a little bit more sensitive. This one is concerning Terry Crews, and that's him there. This is from the Atlantic Black Star, and I read the article a few times, but I'm going to paraphrase the whole thing, and I'm not even going to read I'm not even going to read it. It doesn't take much to read this, but here's what happened. So you can read it for yourself. The link will be there as well. So 
this article is from the 4th of this month. And it appears that President Obama went to speak to some kids, some black kids. And he basically was telling the black kids to, you know, be, you know, to be accountable and be, um, I mean, I'm going to read, let me read the quote so you won't feel like I'm, let's bring it up here. So the star book now nine was thrust into a discussion after initially tweeting about former president Barack Obama's message to black boys. Okay. He says, if you are really confident about your financial situation, you are probably not going to be wearing an eight pound chain around your neck. You know, the whole bling bling thing. Yeah, boy. Uh, Obama said to a crowd of boys in Oakland, California, February 19th, because, oh, I got a bank account. I don't have to show you how much I got. I feel good. And so essentially, he's just basically telling the kids, you know, you don't have to be blinging it, whatever. You know, you don't have to be a gangster, a rapper, a baller, you know, to be successful in this country. And I totally agree with that. You know, I totally agree with that. And I, the, the one things I agree with President Obama on are the things that he actually was talking about black accountability. And he was dead on that. And I agree with him here as well. So Terry Crews, agreeing with the president, was responding to an op-ed by a person named Dorica Purnell. And she wrote an op-ed in the New York Times. I got it right here. And this link here is, why does Obama scold black boys? And I'm not even going to touch that. All right, that's an, that's an op-ed, and that's her opinion, whatever. And so Terry comes back, and essentially he says, um, he... Terry Crews basically says that uh, he's upset that uh, he's upset that that this woman who is not a man is mad at the president for lecturing black boys. Terry Crews' position is is that it takes a man to raise a man, it takes a man to a black man to really relate to a black man and that that's that's the impression that i got from all this that's not the important thing the important thing is is she uh she comes out and they start blasting him for for this and this one blogger named uh jake shrondell says that it's essentially basically says that well, let's start from the beginning turkey says i've reiterated many times that the same sex couples and single parents can successfully raise a child but i believe Paternal and maternal love are like vitamins and minerals to humanity. No matter where you get that paternal and maternal love, my purpose is to give paternal love. And uh, they start arguing back, back and forth. And so eventually she says, love is not gendered. A child will not a child will not starve with only one gender loving them. And then Terry Crews, this is what got him in a little bit of heat. He said, but they will be severely malnourished. And that word malnourished triggered them like crazy. And he ends up apologizing for using that word, he, wording. He says essentially that it was, a, it was the wrong term. He says, I apologize to anyone who was hurt by my severely malnourished tweet. It was in response to someone who said kids wouldn't starve. It was poorly worded, so I deleted it. And so I'm not going to get into this. I don't want to touch any of this because I don't particularly, you know, I know what he's saying and I sort of know what she's saying. The point is, she raised the issue of starve. She she wrote she said starve as a term. He responded back to her starve as saying malnourished. She raised a, she raised a um, analogy. He responded with an analogy. And see how see they take things and run with it because she was offended. She was triggered. And this could happen with anything. And you don't think that Captain Marvel and everything else that's been tweeted back and forth against this has nothing to do with the fact that she was upset because he was against her position. So she attacked, created a straw man because he didn't say that and then attacked the straw man and then blamed it on him. We're seeing that all the time. And that's what we're talking about. And this is what, this is the applicable reason why we're, why a lot of us are so upset by these things because Captain Marvel is just an example of other things that have happened and people are just tired of it. And with Twitter and with Facebook and with other mediums, Rotten Tomatoes, taking down tweets, taking down posts, obliterating audience scores. And no, these people are private companies. They are able to do whatever they want to do. That's part of life. And that's something we live in in a capitalistic society. 
That's not the point. The point is shutting down the opinion. If he was on the street corner doing this, they were still trying to shut him down. And we see that now at campuses like Berkeley and uh, you know UNCC, all over the place. And I'm just saying right now that this is, this is the real reason, like I said before, this is the applicable reason why people are upset. And don't get twisted, okay? Don't get twisted. So Terry, Clu Terry Crews was above the fray, and he uh, apologized, which was probably, you know, he probably just squashed it. He's like, look, dude, you started it. I'm not even gonna, it's not even worth fighting on over this. I'm just going to apologize, whatever. I don't think he should have, but if he hadn't, it would have gone on and on and on and whatever. And lastly, I'll say, Terry Crews came out publicly to say that he had some bad things happen to him in Hollywood and that he was hashtag me too, that he was sexually uh, assaulted in Hollywood as a man by a man. And you don't think that he doesn't have the, the empathy or the knowledge or the credibility to make that kind of statement. And I'm not sure if I saw anybody in Hollywood really come to his defense at all. And so I think that whole thing right there is just, you know, it's nonsense. I think Terry Crews should be given some, um, cut some slack on this, but it had nothing to do with that. It was because he disagreed with her argument and they attacked him by creating that straw man and going after that straw man and blaming it on Terry Crews. And that happened over and over and over again. All right, enough of that. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is putting you guys over to Midnight's Edge. They have a great video. It's called Marvel's Contingency Plan in Case of Captain Marvel's Failure. And it's based on a Reddit uh, and a 4chan uh, articles that were coming out. That was basically saying that Marvel has basically, and this is undocumented and this is unverifiable, that they actually have a plan in place to have an alternate ending or a lesser role for Captain Marvel if Captain Marvel the movie does not perform like it needs to at the box office. And they were citing various things that Brie Larson had said after the fact that. Uh, they had done reshoots to dumb down her involvement or to limit her involvement and that the ultimate role of her responsibilities in Endgame would be Scarlett Johansson's character and that she was upset She was upset by that and that she actually went on to say that she would be happy to see an all-female Avengers movie as well. That's not necessarily related to each other, but it is according to Midnight's Edge, a little bit peculiar. And so the other thing is that the Marvel movies did a similar thing when the Sony deal was, was, was in the works. They didn't know if that was going to go through. In other words, Sony owns the right to Spider-Man. It was sold by Marvel back in the early 90s, or actually in the 80s. They sold the rights to Spider-Man. Marvel Comics was about to go under. This is before the studio came out. Sold the rights to Sony. They kept the rights. As long as they made a movie ever so often, kept that copyright going. Well, Sony had that big scandal with the email scandal. And things started happening with them. I think it was Amy Pascal was over there, I believe. And so that went awry. Sony was losing money. And they were in the verge of actually going bankrupt. They had problems in, in their other divisions with their electronics. And so it was a big, it was a big mess. So um, Disney Marvel took the opportunity to get or try and get their main flagship brand back. Spider-Man is Marvel. If you don't ever think that Marvel didn't want Spider-Man from the get-go, they want Spider-Man more than anything because that is who Marvel is. And when they saw Sony's problems, they jumped in and tried to get it. But there was a possibility that they, that wasn't going to go through. And Captain America's Civil War was in the script phase. So they wrote two scripts. One was with Spider-Man and one was without Spider-Man. The one without Spider-Man was going to be Black Panther heavy. And then, of course, the one with Spider-Man is the one we got. And that worked out. So 
check out the video. Midnight's Edge is saying essentially that Captain Marvel is a big risk for Marvel, and so they don't want to risk the franchise of all the Marvel movies because this these uh, movies within the Marvel MCU are this current generation Star Wars, and they don't want to ruin that. So it's all rumor, whatever. But I find that fascinating. And the video is really good. And I, again, I recommend you going out there and checking their stuff out. Oh, and one more thing I want to say. That the whole thing with the Fandango uh, taking movies and only showing it for Captain Marvel and not allowing like a lead of Battle Angel was debunked. So that was not a, a real thing. They actually proved that out. So you know, I want to make sure I go on record to make sure that you know we... Are disseminating the right kinds of information that we're not going off on the deep end on some of this stuff and so anyway that's all i have to say on that and let's see what happens tomorrow i'm actually looking forward to seeing captain marvel despite some of your comments in the uh, in the in the um uh, chat logs and in the commentaries so i think it's all good i mean i encourage uh feedback and discussion as long as you keep it civil, that's great. I think it's a, that's what makes this country so so awesome. And speaking of which, I want you guys, if you continue liking this content, to share, like, and subscribe. And hit that bell icon notification button. And, you know, just continue rock on, y'all. Rock on and continue with being awesome. And I look forward to seeing you in the near future. Hopefully I'll put a couple of videos uh, this week. Maybe I'll do one more movie review and uh, I may continue doing these informals as much as there's information to talk about. So anyway, let me know what you think and I will see you next time.